Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to do our second video in the series on building your own communications plan. And in this video, we're going to deal with resource management. This is the Survival Comms KISS lecture on Spectrum or RF Spectrum. RF Spectrum is the medium by which most wireless communication takes place. Radio frequency spectrum is a very narrow, useful range for us that exists in the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, in that electromagnetic spectrum, known as radio frequency spectrum, we've subdivided it into bands. And essentially, the bands we're going to concern ourselves with are going to be the HF band, which is essentially the shortwave band, the VHF band, the UHF band, and then the super high frequency and microwave range. These various bands are populated by frequencies. And you can see I've got the frequency ranges down here. And they're subdivisions of these bands, but for simplicity's sake, it's a lot easier just to go ahead and break it down into these four groups here and then have these frequencies here which makes it a lot easier to know where these fall between than it would be if we started subdividing these particular bands. These are common uses for these particular bands and frequency ranges here. Like for your HF spectrum, your common use would be distance coordination without infrastructure. And then you're going to have your majority of your portable radio equipment and mobile radios all exist in the VHF and UHF range which makes that the gives it the lion's share of the tactical realm. Now this isn't to say you couldn't use HF for tactical, but for the most part this is where we're going to concern ourselves with for tactical communications is in the VHF and UHF range. Now your super high frequency and microwave range is pretty much strictly line of sight modes and there are exceptions to that of course, but they're used for linking, networking, and special purposes. Such and for most of your planning purposes, always consider that to be line of sight spectrum and used accordingly. The method you use to convey information using electromagnetic spectrum, once you've decided which frequency you're going to use, is going to be called a mode. And these are your most common modes. Uh, you have your voice mode, which is analog, which is AM or FM, and there's also various formats of digital modulation and it's important that if you're going to use digital that you're all using the same protocol. Another way to convey information is using a data protocol and there's various flavors of data also that exist throughout the entire spectrum here. Morse code. Morse code is another common mode and I consider encryption or, or uh, crypto to be a mode in and of itself and there's various flavors and algorithms of encryption and those like digital modulation or data protocols require you to select a protocol that's interoperable which means that both users can utilize the exact same keys and exact same algorithm to facilitate communication. Another term you'll hear often is the term channel a channel is a subdivision of frequencies in a band portion, like for example the VHF high band. Now in our chart here, what we've done is, is just we've done this, this from, from channel 1 to channel 3 is a LMR FM, which is also known as wide FM, is a 25 kilohertz channel. This is commonly used in amateur radio and was used in LMR previously. But everything now has moved to narrowband FM or LMR FM narrow which is a 12 and a half kilohertz channel. And you can see how that affects your channel capacity where theoretically it doubles your channel capacity. Now you can see right here that our center of signal right here would be 5 kilohertz which would be the deviation limit for the wide FM band. And you can see on either side of this right here there would be a 10 kilohertz spacing on either side of this to make up for the 25 kilohertz channel. Now in narrow FM you can see that our center signal D 
deviation limit is two and a half kilohertz. And on either side of that, what you have is is the double, or if you take two and a half kilohertz and double it, so you'll have 10 kilohertz on either side of that, making up your channel bandwidth or your channel spacing of 12 and a half kilohertz. These are some common radio services that refer to frequencies as channels, and that's the Marine VHF band, uh, ISM devices, industrial, scientific, and medical devices, uh, GMRS, FRS, CB, and MURS services all consider, all refer to their frequencies as channels. So essentially, your channel 1 on FRS on one device is going to be the same as channel 1 on the next device. Another common use for the term channel is to represent a user controlled frequency position in equipment. Like you can see on this here, you got channel 1. Channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, etc., etc. And oftentimes, these are also known as presets, position, like channel position, modes, which can further add to confusion, or selection. Now we're going to discuss selective signaling. Uh, selective signaling's purpose is to protect access, reduce interference, you can set user groups, provide push-to-talk ID, etc., etc. Essentially, when you're running a radio in carrier squelch mode or open squelch mode, whatever radio traffic occurs on that frequency, whether or not it's directed at you, is going to be received by your equipment. And selective signaling inhibits that. Selective signaling allows that traffic to be routed towards you through very simple means in most cases. Uh, the most common one is a subaudible tone, which is a subaudible tone, which is below the range of human hearing for the most part, that is on the carrier that the receiving equipment programmed for it will only open its squelch when it receives that tone along with the RF carrier. And this is commonly known as PL or private line. It's also known as uh, CTCSS, uh, CG, channel guard. Uh, some of your skin pack equipment will call it privacy codes. It's called code squelch or tone squelch. So that's, that's probably your most common one. You'll have your audible tone, like your quick call, which used to be used, to be used for station alerting. And then your DTMF, which is like your telephone touchpad. Uh, Subaudible digital, which is a DPL, which you'll see that digital private line. Uh, audible digital, which is an example, will be like MDC 1200, which is where you hear that annoying screech on the radio. And that provides push to talk ID and uh, access to whatever network it's set up for. And then digital, uh, which your NAC is used in Project 25. And you also have a color code, which is your DMR. And then finally, encryption. Encryption, encryption is another selective signaling protocol. Uh, it requires a matching key in order to uh, open the squelch of the particular radio. Now we're going to discuss interoperability. After 9-11, uh, that became a big buzzword. And there was all kinds of manufacturers and vendors that were throwing it around as a marketing term and coming up with a bunch of different audio interfaces and sometimes RF based interfaces to uh, facilitate communication between users of different equipment, different users, and they share the same talk path. Now, the ultimate solution to interoperability, in my opinion, is a unified command post and unified command structure. That's where you're talking to your people, I'm talking to my people, and we're in face-to-face -face contact with one another. Uh, now, failing that, if you're operating equipment in different bands, the solution is the unified command post. Or if you have enough resources and you have an interop cache of radios that operate with your equipment to where you would go ahead and supply that outside resource with radios that they could communicate with you with. Now, let's say that you operate on the same uh, band as the outside resource you're working with, and you need to communicate with one another. 
This is when you use common frequencies and modes. Like let's say that you use one, one user uses one particular digital protocol and the other uses another digital protocol. What you need to have is, is it programmed into both radios is common channels that are using analog FM in a tactical radio sense. And, you know, if you're using disparate data protocols to communicate an HF spectrum, uh, you can always fall back to single sideband or CW modulation. With a common channel, the operators of these two different pieces of equipment that are within the same band can operate with one another directly and oftentimes on the same infrastructure if available. Another consideration is procedures. Uh, the outside resource that you have may use different call signs and they may operate with a different structure than you. And the only way to recognize that and adjust that is to pre-plan and train with that outside resource. When you're organizing your spectrum resources, always select common channel or talk path names. Always make them easy to remember orient them towards whatever that channel or talk path's use is and implement them across your entire fleet of radios. Okay, now we're going to put it together and this is your homework. Inventory your equipment. Identify your bands, modes, and capabilities of your equipment. And then select frequencies utilizing those bands, modes, and capabilities for your resource list or frequency pool. Go ahead and select common names, ones that you know that you'll be able to implement across your your uh, cache of radios, and make them usage oriented and easy to remember, and that they'll fit into the alphanumeric displays of your equipment, if such. Coordinate with others that you may work with in the future that you anticipate working with, and establish common talk paths in advance, so that way they know that this is going to be my calling channel. This is how you're going to be able to reach me and these are how we're going to interoperate with one another. And then go ahead and put pen to paper and create a re reference list or a resource list for reference. An excellent form to keep track of this pool that you're building is just a generic ICS-217 form. You can download these off the internet or you can go ahead and download the sort that's in an Excel format or you can fill it out just like we've done here. And you can see that, you know, you can identify which band this is for right here. And the description, like this is zone A of a portable radio that's within your UHF cache. And these frequencies here are just, I just put these on here. These don't make any sense whatsoever. But you can see you've got channels 1 through 16, which are the selection on top of the radio. And we have our configuration of repeated or simplex channels here. We have the names that we've selected for each one of these channels. We also, if you want to delineate which users you want to use a certain resource for, you can go ahead and put that on here. And then you put your receive frequencies and selective signaling protocol, transmit frequencies, selective signaling protocol, and you can go ahead and specify it's an analog or digital channel. And you can go over here and you can add remarks for any kind of notations or any kind of specific information for the channel in question or the frequency resource in question that you are considering using. Knowing and organizing your resources is the first step in establishing an effective communications plan. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.